Hi, this is Adam. This is another Eye on North Carolina blog. We're here in Wake Forest, North Carolina at the Wake Forest Historical Museum and birthplace of Wake Forest College. And being a sports fan, one thing I picked up on the way here is in 1888, the first collegiate football game in North Carolina occurred between Wake Forest and UNC and Wake Forest won. So that, that was uh, interesting history right there. And the name Demon Deacons came about from a local editor who watched the game and he thought they played like Demon Deacons. So we'll learn more about that stuff and kind of take a tour. I'm here with executive director Ed Morris and he's going to tour us around. So it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, yes. Adam. Thanks for coming out. Um, of course, a lot of our collection is about sports. Uh, and we're in the sports area now. Uh, we start out with a person of interest. The sweater there in the case belonged to Tony Trentini. Uh, Tony was a football player, outstanding football player at Wake Forest College. He started the football program at Wake Forest High School. Uh, the stadium here at Wake Forest, the football stadium, now holds his name as Trentini oh, wow. Stadium. Uh, he went on to be a coach at Temple University and unfortunately passed away when he was a very young man. But there's a foundation here in town now uh, that raises money and gives scholarships, full scholarships, to uh, deserving uh, young people from the high schools here in Wake Forest uh, to college. Uh, so uh, he's long been a part of Wake Forest uh, town history and, and continues on today. Do you know his record? I do not, no, no, unfortunately, okay. but he was quite good. <laughs> good, okay. Uh, and just up above Tony Trentini, you see the only uh, ACC uh, team to have ever won the uh, national title in baseball. Uh, that was back in 1955, with only one year left to go for Wake Forest being here. Uh, and some of those guys are still around today, but that's a very celebrated uh, team. I bet. 55 baseball team. And, and no other baseball team in the in the area has, has won. Yeah, they've never won the national championship. As a matter of fact, there's kind of a little story that some of those guys that are still around today, every time an ACC team makes the playoffs out in uh, Nebraska, uh, when they lose, these guys call one another on the telephone and have a champagne toast. <laughs> Can't blame <laughs> they're them. They're still the only ones. Yes, they're proud of that. They're they definitely are proud of that. Uh, in the very corner, we have the original Demon Deacon. Uh, that outfit was worn by a student uh, named Jack Baldwin back in 1941. Uh, the Demon Deacon uh, mascot actually uh, came along uh, in 1923, as you had said, uh, when the newspaper editor said that the, the team had played like Demon Deacons. Um, but there had never been a real character dressed as the deacon until Baldwin did that as a, kind of a prank uh, at a ball game against UNC uh, in 1941. The dean called him to the sidelines and told him to be in his office the next uh, on Monday morning and he was fairly certain he was going to pack his bags to go home. Uh, but the dean had been overwhelmed by uh, contacts with uh, uh, telephone calls, uh, telegrams, visits about how wonderful it was, so as opposed to expelling young Baldwin on Monday morning, we had to ask him if he would do that at every game. That's great, uh, and I'm sure he loved it. Absolutely, and yeah. then of course right next uh, to the Demon Deacon is the ba uh, basketball uniform of Dickie Hemrick. Uh, Hemrick uh, set the national record for scoring in basketball uh, in 1955, and that record held until 2006 when it was bought, uh, broken by uh, JJ Redick at Duke, and then of course a couple years later it was broken again by Tyler Hedsbro at uh, UNC. However, uh, Hemrick did not have a three-point shot, and he only got one foul shot. So as far as balls through the hoop, he yeah, still holds he the record. He's the man, yeah. He's the man. Yeah. And that's now, of course, we've got a, a case full of uh, trophies that were won from everything from the golf team when Arnold Palmer was here as a student and golfer uh, to football trophies. Uh, the Wake Forest won the very first Gator Bowl game back in 1946. Um, and you'll see the Gator Bowl trophy in there. Uh, and then we call Coach's Corner. Um, Today, all the basketball, baseball, uh, football coaches have these luxurious suites of offices. Uh, but when the good old days, down in the basement, underneath the gymnasium, sat this disc. Oh, wow. And 
all four of major sports coaches shared the one desk at the same time. So they uh, must have been fighting over it. <laughs> they, they, they were. They had to be chummy. Yeah, and uh, fighting over their cigarettes. They had, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, in the day, uh, they all had the bad habit of smoking. Uh, the three of the coaches smoke camels, uh, so there's a camel there. Uh, and the football coach, P. Head Walker, smoked cigars, so we have an honorary That's cigar great. for, uh, for P. Head there. Uh, and then, of course, uh, right off the, their luxurious office, there would have been the locker room. I love that there's such a rich history in sports. As a sports fan, that's, that's great. That's amazing. And uh, you guys take pride in your sports here. We do indeed. We have our own uh, whiskey still. Uh, some of our fellow museums call this a revenue producer. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there was an area west of town that was known as the Hurricane, and that's spelled the way it's pronounced with a, a hard H-A-R-R, Hurricane. Hurricane. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was the area of the community that was widely known for produ producing moonshine. The land there was very rocky and poor. Uh, it only produced uh, poor quality corn. Uh, and if you have poor quality corn, uh, it can be turned into liquid very easily. Uh, so uh, it also provided uh, refreshment for a campus full of Baptist boys that could go out and buy it in public. <laughs> I'm sure they loved that. I'm sure they did. It also brought money in. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it was a, a good uh, economic uh, generator for the community. Big bands were a big thing here when the college was here. Uh, the college did not allow dancing, oddly enough, on the campus, but uh, there was plenty of opportunity to dance off the campus. But uh, one of the uh, college groups was always musical groups, and we have several of them uh, there on the side. From, uh, but they had a, a big band called the Southerners, and they were actually famous from uh, uh, southeastern coast of the U.S., from uh, Virginia all the way down uh, through South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, but they were all Wake Forest College students. University Medical School in Winston-Salem started here. Uh, it started about 1902. And and uh, we have items from the college hospital and medical school here in this exhibit. Uh, the mantelpiece over there is the only surviving element of the old college hospital that was on campus. Uh, in addition to the college, the other uh, leading industry in the town of Wake Forest was uh, the Royal Mill. Uh, and here you get a large image of the mill building. That building still exists today. It's been uh, converted into apartments and condominiums. Uh, and then in the case are items from families that uh, worked the mill, lived in the mill, uh, and of course the mill whistle, uh, which uh, you can see in this photograph in the shadows up there. Items on businesses in town. Uh, one of the oldest department stores was Bolus's, and you see here Mr. Bolus, and what looks like a baby doll standing up on the counter was actually his little daughter Elizabeth. Um, there were two movie theaters in downtown Wake Forest, uh, lots of college students, so uh, plenty of opportunity for movies. They, each of the theaters changed the movie every week, uh, so you had two new movie, movies in town. Every one was Wilkinson's department store, we had the safe in Wilkinson's. We don't know what's inside that safe. It can't be oh, open. We don't know what the combination is. So we don't know what secrets that holds. Will you get a locksmith one day and crack that We, we might have to do that one day. Uh, it did rattle around a bit when they moved it down here and it didn't make any noise. And there's nothing nothing hard in there anyway. I'm sure there's something. Some letter. <laughs> it could be a love letter or something. Something, yeah. something that's right. Uh, and you see we have a firebox down below. A little interesting story. And most people don't know what those things are. They were like the little fire alarms that are by the doors right. today. But they were on your street corner on your, in your neighborhood. Um, and they were all over the downtown district and the west side of the railroad tracks, but they were not in the African-American community on the other side of the railroad tracks. So Miss Allie Mae Young was a retired school teacher and an African-American lady. She ran for town council and she became the second American to serve on the Wake Forest Town Board. Uh, and her platform was that when she was elected, there would be fire call boxes all over town. And she got fire call boxes all over town. And, and the entire community was supportive of that, which right. was great. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. At the height of rail traffic in the World War II, the trains were coming through town at a rate of about every 10 minutes. Wow, very um, noisy. <laughs> very noisy. Yeah. And there, of course, there was passenger service. You could get on a train and wait for us to go to New York or to Miami or pretty right. much anywhere up and down the East Coast. Is why did the campus move? 
What's the story behind it? Ah, well, uh, it's a long and complicated story. Okay. Uh, but uh, Duke University had started out its life as Trinity College south of Greensboro and was lured to Durham uh, in the early 20th century by uh, several tobacco magnates, uh, Washington Duke and Julian Carr. Um, sort of in keeping up with the Dukes, um, the R.J. Reynolds family owned the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company headquartered in Winston-Salem, and they thought it would be nice to have a college in their city. Uh, so they went out uh, seeking a college uh, that was willing to move to Winston-Salem. Uh, they first made an offer to Meredith College, a women's college in Raleigh. Right. Meredith turned them down. They went, then uh, made an offer to Davidson College out near Charlotte. Wow. Uh, Davidson also turned them down. Uh, they came to Wake Forest next, and since the medical school had already moved to Winston-Salem to be aligned with the North Carolina Baptist Hospital, Wake Forest was delighted at the offer. Although it wasn't taken lightly, there was a lot of arguing and fussing I and bet. feuding about bet. whether or not the college should move. But uh, they did accept the Reynolds offer, and they did move to Winston-Salem. However, they took a little lesson from the Trinity College uh, folks. When they accepted the Reynolds offer, they said the name could never change. Right. Uh, so it I'm, I, any outsider not from North Carolina, they, they know Wake Forest, and they're like, is the university here? And, and they're like, no, it's not. And uh, right. it's out in Winston-Salem. And did, I, I meant to ask, did the relocation devastate the community? It did. Okay. It almost left Wake Forest as a ghost town. Okay. Um, 1955, the price of houses in this neighborhood dropped by more than half. Wow. Uh, the department stores that were downtown, all but one closed. Uh, and it eventually, it, it survived for a number of years, but eventually it closed as well. The two movie theaters both closed, both burned. Uh, here we have a, a small display on Dr. Calvin Jones. Uh, the uh, Highway 98 bypass carries his name. You might have noticed right. that when you come into town. Yeah. Uh, and most people probably have no clue who Dr. Calvin Jones is when they ride on that road every day. But uh, he was from Sheffield, Massachusetts, uh, in the Boston area. Uh, he was educated as a physician, licensed to practice medicine when he was only 17. Wow. Uh, he moved to North Carolina when he was about 20 and practiced medicine in Raleigh for a little over 20 years. Uh, and then he moved out here. Um, we don't know what possessed him to want to move out into the middle of the woods, which it literally was, but he did. Uh, and he purchased this uh, farmhouse that's out in front of the museum uh, and a 615-acre corn plantation. Uh, she brought several things into the marriage. She brought slaves. She brought a son by her first husband who was deceased. Uh, and she brought a boatload of money. Uh, and so he started investing her money in land in Tennessee. And by 1832 decided they should move to Tennessee. He put this place up for sale and it was bought by the North Carolina Baptist Church to start a college. So here, however, he is the one that gave the house the name Wake Forest. So it is from the name he gave his home that the college took its name, and then later the town, town. took its name yeah. as well. Yeah. So we owe quite a bit to Calvin. The little Rolls Royce golf cart was made for Mickey Mantle. You see it has Mickey Mantle's number seven and the Yankee uh, pinstripes on it. Uh, Mickey Mantle and a local boy by the name of Tommy Byrne uh, both played for the Yankees at the same time. Actually, Tommy came here as a freshman to play baseball for Wake Forest College, and he lived the next 70 years of his life here. Uh, but uh, after they both retired from baseball, Mickey became well known for his charity golf tournaments, and Tommy was always a player in the golf tournament. And uh, one year it happened to land around the time of Tommy's birthday, and at the end of the tournament, Mickey presented Tommy with the golf cart. So where are we now? We're in front, We're of, in front of Dr. Calvin Jones's house. Okay. Uh, the house was built about 1820, uh, and Calvin Jones lived here from the early 1820s until he moved to Tennessee uh, sometime about 1832. And then in February of 1834, uh, what's now Wake Forest University began in the house. So it has quite a history. And it's, I'm sure this house was very impressive for the time. It was. Yeah. It, was it was considered a mansion in its day. Yeah, uh, like quite that. a nice house indeed. And North Carolina did not have the large column plantation houses like Virginia and South Carolina. Right. This was pretty much about as good as it got. Yeah, yeah. very impressive. Definitely showed as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can go inside if you want. Great.
looks a little slick no, no, from the slick. ice we had last night. The, uh, the parlor is furnished like it might would have looked when the Jones family lived in the house. Uh, there's period furnishings. A um, couple of interesting things uh, about the house. The mirror belonged to uh, Governor W.W. W. Holden. Governor Holden was appointed governor of North Carolina at the end of the Civil War. Uh, he later was elected and then he was impeached in 1871 and he holds the uh, honor, I guess, or the distinction of being the only governor in United States history to have ever been impeached and removed from office. Wow, and why was he impeached? Well, he tried to suppress the Ku Klux Klan uh, in North Carolina, and he failed to calculate that about 80% of the members of the General Assembly were also Klan members. Wow. Uh, so they, they retaliated. Yeah. He, he, but that's that's very, uh, that's trailblazing for the time oh, to oh, do something like that. Absolutely. Very risky. I very, ris very risky. Yeah. But when he was a teenager, he worked for Calvin Jones's newspaper. So there's a tie. And the Holden family also has ties to Wake Forest. Uh, and then the dining room actually looks a bit more like uh, the house with the Wakes and Waits. Dr. and Mrs. Wake. Dr. Wake was the first president of Wake Forest College. Uh, and he was from upstate New York and came down to North Carolina in the late 1820s um, and was called by the North Carolina Baptist to be the first president of the college. Um, couple things in this room uh, came with the wakes to North Carolina, the rocking chair and the small drop leaf table in the corner. Uh, when uh, Wake was working on his education at what is now George Washington University in Washington, he had the pleasure of entertaining the Marquis de Lafayette who helped George Washington win the American Revolution. And uh, they served dinner to Lafayette at that table. So that's a very famous so table. Very famous <laughs> table. Not too many tables around today that Lafayette had done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're fortunate to have that. When Calvin Jones lived in the house, he had his doctor's office in here. And uh, we don't have that in store yet. That's in our plans to do. Okay. Uh, but that also makes the house famous because Calvin Jones was probably the very first physician to do cataract surgery in the United States. Wow, I and did, did not know that. And yeah. he did it in this house. Wow. Uh, and there's no anesthesia in the 1820s, so think about it. <laughs> Do uh, eye doctors kind of look up to him for doing that, or is there some sort of... I think most don't, but there are a few that recognize the name Calvin Jones, Jones uh, right. as being the person who pioneered uh, cataract surgery. Now, there are newspaper accounts of Calvin Jones uh, doing his cataract surgery, and those accounts uh, say that it's quite successful. But do you remember what I told you in the other room? Calvin oh, Jones on the newspaper. Right, right. So it, uh, so uh, you know, he got to spin, spin the whole thing. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I think all in all, I think they probably were successful, and he certainly is recognized as a pioneer in cataract surgery. He had actually gone to France and studied the eye and the French surgeons, and he came wow. back and did the surgeries. So the house has had quite a history. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Well, Ed, thank you so much for the tour. I greatly appreciate it. Up. And we learned quite a bit today. This is another Eye on North Carolina blog. We're in Wake Forest, North Carolina, at the Wake Forest Historical Museum. And we hope to see you all soon. Take care.